Hello and welcome back to She Walks, She Paints. Thank you so much for joining me again. And as always, if you have been watching my other videos and either liking, commenting or subscribing, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it and it's really helping me with my channel. So today we've come out, it's a bit of a grey day, it's been raining a bit, but hopefully it's going to turn out nice. And we are a little bit short on time today, so we're only going to do a short walk. It's not a long one, but I think it's going to be really interesting. So we're going to walk up Abbey Craig, which is near Stirling, and we're going to visit the National Monument for William Wallace. So obviously a massive hero in Scotland, um, star of the film Braveheart, um, which featured Mel Gibson playing William Wallace and he's just very well known across Scotland and across the world. We're going to head up to the monument, see what we can see from there, have a little look at the museum and just take in the woodland walk as we go around. So it should be really beautiful. Let's head out and see what we can find. <laughs> to the monument is lined with these amazing wooden carvings by Scottish sculptor Ian Chalmers. They tell the history of this landscape going back thousands of years. sculpture references the period just after the Ice Age, when this area would have been underwater. In fact, Abbey Craig was one of the few high areas of land which rose above the sea level. Oh my gosh, it's just so lush and green because it's been raining and it's summertime. It's beautiful. carving celebrates the first metal workers, with bronze being the first type to be worked about 3,000 years ago. Archaeologists have discovered a horde of bronze spears on this very hill, so it must have been an important feature in the landscape back then. The National Wallace Monument was built between 1861 and 1869 to commemorate William Wallace, one of Scotland's most famous national heroes. The real monument stands at 220 feet high and can be seen for miles around.
William Wallace was a Scottish knight, famous for being one of the leaders of the First War of Scottish Independence in the late 1200s, and popularised over the centuries with epic poems, stories, and of course, the 1990s film Braveheart. The Wallace Monument overlooks the historic city of Stirling, a royal borough and where I lived when I first moved to Scotland. Stirling is probably best known for its 16th century castle, just visible in the distance, and as the location of William Wallace's most famous victory over the English at the Battle of Stirling Bridge in 1297. At that time, Stirling was the main crossing point of the River Forth, therefore its location was of strategic importance, controlling access to the north of Scotland. In September 1297, the Scots army sprung a trap for the English forces that were advancing across the narrow wooden bridge, which helped them to defeat the much larger army. After this battle, Wallace was appointed guardian of Scotland, but there was no happy ending to his story. In 1305, Wallace was captured and hung, drawn and quartered by the English king Edward I for high treason. the monument. That's a lot of steps. I can't remember how many steps it is. I think it's something like 280 but it feels like a lot more but it's worth it when you get the views like this. So cool. Many of the architectural features of the monument are inspired by Scottish castles and other ancient structures. Boy. 
Lots of beautiful buttercups, if Jack manages not to stand on them all. Yes. Did everyone else used to hold a buttercup flower under someone's chin to check if they like butter? Let me know in the comments if you remember that game. We've reached the really peaceful part of the walk here, so we're further away from the road and the kind of tourist attraction route. And we're just having a really beautiful woodland walk in the sun. The sun's come out for us. Just looks like a jungle here. So leafy and green. It's beautiful. Almost don't feel like you're in Scotland. These must have been storm damaged trees. The smell of cut pine is amazing. Back at the main path now, I'm gonna head back down. Had a really lovely walk there just in the woodlands and I really hope you enjoyed the visit to the Wallace Monument as well. So really, really interesting museum and amazing views from the top. I think there's one more place we're gonna check out while we're in the area. So I will catch you there. Ladybird or ladybug? 
I think that might be a UK USA divide. Let's have a debate. Oh, bye. I love looking at the pictorial carvings on old gravestones. Some are very naive, while others are incredibly ornate, probably a sign of the wealth of the person who commissioned it. The parish of Logie is among the oldest in Scotland, being established during the reign of King David I, between 1124 and 1153. The ruins we see today would have been built in the late 1500s. These are 12th century hogback gravestones, the oldest in the graveyard. So that was Loki Old Kirk, um, one of the oldest churches in Scotland apparently. So no wonder it's in a bit of a uh, state of ruin. <laughs> It's just really interesting to look at all the gravestones, especially with that memento mori symbol of the skull and crossbones from the 17th century. So yeah, just a nice little place to have a look, really peaceful. And now we're just heading back. So I guess I will see you back in the studio. This is a seven spot ladybird, the most common in the UK. I purposefully chose to work from a photo where you can see all seven spots.
There are believed to be 47 different ladybird species in the UK, but over 5,000 species globally. Most species are celebrated by gardeners as they eat insects that are usually thought of as pests, such as aphids. This painting is actually not as simple as it first seemed. I need to get all the red shading right before I can go in with the black details, but I won't know for sure if I've made the red deep enough until the black goes on. The name Ladybird is thought to have been inspired by early images of the Virgin Mary, who would often appear wearing red clothing. The first recorded use of the name for these tiny beetles was in 1674. Before this, the word Ladybird referred to women, while the beetles were often called Lady Cow or Cow Lady, presumably because of their spots. By the end of the 17th century, Ladybird was widely used as a term for this family of beetles throughout Britain and parts of the USA, although I believe they are more commonly called ladybugs there now. You might have noticed that I changed the position of the ladybird's leg here from the photo that I'm working on. Without the context of the background, the leg just didn't work in its original position.
I'd like to say a huge thank you to everyone who has supported my channel in any way. By liking, commenting and subscribing, buying prints from my Etsy store or buying me a coffee through Kofi, you are helping me keep doing what I love and sharing it with you each week. I'm not even videoing. <laughs> I am. <laughs> 